Ho oh, oh. ho! Welcome to today's cocktail. Today we're going to do a Texas Fizz. Yep, yeah, we're sticking with the bubbly still. And I'm going to refer to my notes today because I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of fizzes because we did the Ritz Fizz yesterday. So it's actually way back in the late 1800s, just around the time that the telephone, barbed wire, and Levi's jeans were invented and the Transcontinental Railway was finished in the United States that someone came up with a gin fizz basically it was gin, lemon juice, sugar syrup and carbonated water or soda water and this is what became known as gin fizz and over the years there were quite a few variations on this there was a golden fizz, a silver fizz a crushed strawberry fizz and leading up to prohibition about 1910 in the USA they were still very popular but they decided to replace the soda water with champagne and they started calling this a diamond fizz now the gin fizzes themselves they remained popular in Europe even while the prohibition was on in, in the States and in sometime in the 1920s in London a couple of bartenders came up with a Texas Fizz. And basically this was a gin fizz but they just added some orange juice to it. So it's basically gin, um, orange juice, soda water pretty much. And that became pretty popular over the whole of Europe. But in about 1936 there was a bartender at the Ritz Hotel in Paris. And he had a lot of Americans in his clientele, a lot of fairly rich ones, of which one of them was from Texas. Now he realised that the current Texas Fizz, which was just basically gin fizz with some orange in, didn't necessarily have the firepower and the spectacle that the Lone Star State of Texas might actually expect. So perhaps thinking back on the Diamond Fizz, which had champagne in it, that he knew about from when he used to work in the States, he decided to replace the soda water with champagne in a Texas Fizz and then call it the Texas Fizz with a bit more firepower. So that's all he did really. He swapped out the soda water in a Texas Fizz for champagne. And the Texas Fizz was born. So what are we going to need for this? We're on with some gin, some orange juice, a little bit of grenadine syrup and some champagne or Prosecco. So should I actually have a glass of crushed ice, or broken ice at least, but I couldn't be bothered to do that, so we've got full ice cubes. So what do we actually need? We're going to need four measures of champagne. So I will do this. I've got to be a bit careful with this because obviously putting this into the measures is a little bit on the bubbly side. So we're looking for four of these. Good job I've read my notes because I'm pouring most of this over my notes. And because I've spilled a little bit of it, we'll give it a little bit more for good luck. There we go. And then it is one measure of gin. Whoa, a bit heavy this one, it's a brand new bottle. gin. It's then one measure of orange juice. And then it is actually a teaspoon of grenadine but I don't seem to have brought my teaspoon in with me so I'm just going to measure it a little bit or so just a little, that's probably more than a teaspoon. The basically just gives it a little bit of an orange colour. And then if I can find my straw, we'll give it just a little stir, see what that's like. That's alright as well. I'd say I've had better ones, but I, I quite like that. So that is a Texas Fizz. So we have in Texas Fizz 
four measures of champagne. Oh, Prosecco. One measure of gin. One measure of orange juice. And a teaspoon of grenadine. And that just really gives it this sort of pink colour. Anyway, Texas Fizz. Cheers. Ha 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 